Hello and welcome to this channel. Today we're going to talk about gene mutations, the different kinds and how this influences the creation of the protein. I would be happy if you could subscribe and let's get started. Now I would like to talk about gene mutations. First of all, what is a mutation? It is a permanent change in the DNA sequence. In another video I will talk about chromosome mutations where the chromosome is changed but here we talk about changes within the genes. Mutations can be either hereditary or acquired. Heredi hereditary mutations are inherited from a parent or parents and are since birth or since development of the embryo in every cell. They are also called germline mutations because they were in the parents' gametes and are passed on to the baby. Then acquired mutations are also called somatic mutations and they can be due to environmental, fac environmental factors like UV radiation or X-ray radiation, also the sunlight or smoking or mistakes in the cell division, so in mitosis or yeah, just in mitosis, otherwise it would be a germline mutation. And um, these mutations are in certain cells, but not in the gummy, so they are not passed on to the next generation. Now let's talk about the different kinds of mutations. There are three main kinds, the base substitution, the base addition and the base deletion. Now let's talk about the different kind of mutations, what happens and how it changes the protein conformation. So in insertion, as the name says, one or more base pairs are added to the DNA sequence and this leads to a change in the amino acid sequence. If you're not completely sure about how this whole process from DNA to amino acid to protein works, you can go back to my other videos. I mentioned the uh, replication, the transcription and the translation. You can see those and then come back here. So a change in the amino acid sequence leads to a change in the protein. And this protein might be possibly non-functional or might not fulfill all its functions. Because the amino acid sequence is also important for how a protein, like for example an enzyme, will look in its 3D structure and for example when a part of the amino acid sequence is affected where one of the bonds between the protein uh, sequence is changed, then the protein might not fold correctly to its 3D structure. Then the next kind of mutation is deletion where one or more base pairs are removed from the sequence and it's also possible that complete genes or several genes are removed depending on how large the amount of sequence is that is affected and also this of course changes the amino acid sequence and the protein might be possibly non-functional. The next kind is the duplication where a piece of the DNA is copied and added. It might be copied only once or it might be copied several times and it will be added either in the same place or in another place within the DNA. And the change in the amino acid sequence leads to the protein possibly being non-functional. The next kind of mutation is the substitution. This is one of the three main kinds where there occurs an exchange of the base pairs and if only one base pair is exchanged then we call it a point mutation. And the substitution might be either a transition or a transversion. In a transition a purine base is exchanged for another purine base or a pyrimidine base is exchanged for another pyrimidine base. If you don't know what purines and pyrimidines are I will link you in now the video for my introduction to, gen to genetics. There I explain what it is, how it works and so on. So now we talk about the different kinds of mutations on a little bit 
different scale because the mutations lead to different kinds of problems within the genes, or maybe not. In case of a silent mutation, the mutation leads to the coding of a synonymous triplet. So the same amino acid will be put in, in the sequence, so there is no change. So the body doesn't even notice that there happened something. While in a frame shift mutation, uh, we describe any mutation which leads to a shifting of the triplet reading pattern. So you know that always three bases code for one amino acid. If we now delete one or add one or um, add even more or exchange some bases, then this reading pattern doesn't work anymore. Then, yeah, you can imagine it's like a puzzle or a domino and suddenly one part is taken out and you can't always read three. So the next kind of mutation is a missense mutation where there's an exchange of an amino acid in the sequence resulting in changes of the protein. So another amino acid is put in in the sequence than the one that should be and the protein might be possibly non-functional again. And the last kind of mutation I will talk about is the nonsense mutation. And here, an exchange of one base pair or many base pairs, or also the deletion or insertion or duplication. So whatever change in the sequence might lead to the creation of a stop codon. So then the amino acid will be a yeah, the amino acid sequence will be interrupted pre-terminally and it can be already very in the start of the sequence or might be just one or two amino acids before the actual stop codon would occur. But also here, depending on where this mutation occurs within a gene, the protein might be non-functional. So that's it. Next time we're going to talk about chromosome mutations, about a few different disorders, and I hope you will be there again.